You are listening to Productivity Straight Talk with your host, Amber De La Garza. Amber is a sought-after productivity coach, trainer, speaker, and writer who gives entrepreneurs the straight talk on personal productivity. No BS fluff or overused jargon. Just actionable strategies to get results and succeed in business. And here is your host, Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. Welcome and thank you for listening to Productivity Straight Talk. Today is episode 225. If it's not a hell yes, what is it? If you're a business owner who wants to improve your time management and elevate your productivity so you can maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most, then you're in the right place and I'm so glad you've joined me. You know, we are almost through January when this episode is being published, but I want to just remind you, it's still the new year, and I hope that you are having an amazing, productive start to your year. But if you're anything like what's been going on for me and many of my clients is that the holidays brought a lot of sickness with our kids or with ourselves or with family members coming off the holiday. Uh, Lots of time off for the kids. My son's only been in school two days for the last month because of winter break and then, you know, COVID shutdowns in our school district. I've heard from many of you that it is similar across the country, as well as snow days. I am encouraging you to not lose sight of knowing that you have a fresh start and an entire 11 plus months ahead of you. Do not let the first month, if it's true for you and it was a rocky start, change your trajectory this year. I needed to hear this for myself. And so I thought maybe you may need to hear that too, is that we can choose to recommit at any day. You can choose to recommit on a Monday. You can recommit at the first of the month. You can recommit tomorrow. Any day is a good day to recommit. I really wanted to set you up for a really great start to the new year. And so if you have not already listened to some of these episodes that I've done specifically around setting yourself up for success in the new year, I would encourage you to go back and listen to episode 220, Cleaning the Slate for a Fresh Start. Again, that can happen in February or March. 221, The Gift That Keeps on Giving. That is a gift that you can unwrap any time in the year. And then episode 222, that's a wrap, sharing my 2021 feedback loop. And in there, I go behind the scenes in my own business and share with you what worked, uh, what didn't work, and what could work, and what we're looking forward to in 2022. And today we're going to be setting ourselves up for an amazing year by talking about raising your standards in your business, raising your standards to a hell yes. And we're going to explore areas of your business that I believe you should have hell yeses. After you dive into today's episode and you realize that there are more areas of your business that you want to raise your standards on and have more hell yeses, if you want support, training, coaching around raising your standards and having a business that is filled with hell yeses, then I encourage you to take a look at my Leverage Lab program. My Leverage Lab program is coaching, training, and accountability to support you as the business owner and CEO and the growth of your business. And now let's get to the straight talk. So often we find ourselves normalizing our schedule, team members, clients, projects that you decide to take on, meetings that show up on our calendar. And we normalize them even when we're not totally excited about them, saying things like, it is what it is, it'll be good enough, and maybe you're thinking, it's not worth changing it, it's not worth questioning, is this truly something I want? But if you want to build a better business and live a fuller personal life, be less stressed and attain greater success, 
you've got to not allow yourself to get too content with the things the way they are, because I'm going to invite you to raise your standards. A great way to do that across the board in your business is to know what to say no to in your business. You know, for every opportunity that comes along, if you were to ask yourself, is this a hell yes, and it's not, then is it a no? It quite possibly should be, and setting the bar at hell yes will help you raise your standards. When it comes to your business, I invite you to raise your standards to a hell yes across the board. All those things that you may have normalized and just said, this is part of my day, this is part of being a business owner, this is just how it is in my industry. What if it didn't need to be? What if the real enemy is that you've normalized it and not questioned it and said, I deserve it for it to be a hell yes. You see, when things are not a hell yes, I know for certain that you use too much mental bandwidth, time, energy, and attention trying to make things a hell yes. You put your blinders on and fight to the death trying to make it into a hell yes, convincing yourself that you just need to work harder or put more money behind it, get more training, or you tell yourself that nothing better will come along. If it's not this, I don't think it could get better, right? It's kind of like knowing that you can handle what it is, but uncertain about what it could be. You may be telling yourself that you're unworthy of more. Are you worthy of a higher quality client, a highly qualified team member saying, yes, I cannot wait to work with your company? Are you telling yourself, good is good enough. Oftentimes, that looks like fitting a square peg into a round hole or may feel like you're just hitting your head against the wall. To get more hell yeses that are spot on in your business, it's first really important to be crystal clear about what it is that you want to achieve, both in your goals, but also, and extremely important, is your vision of success. Because your vision of success is often the way in which you're choosing to experience the journey while you're achieving and going after your goals, i.e. growing your business. I'm going to give you a very specific example that every one of you listening will either understand because you've done this or will soon come to this situation and recognize it. I want you the next time that you're looking to add a team member, whether it's a contractor or an employee, I want you to know exactly what qualifications you need to hire for. I want you to know what the role is, what are their responsibilities, what character traits, what experience that they should have. I want you to get so clear about that before you even start taking applications or doing interviews. And the reason I coach my clients on never, ever skipping this step, even when someone you know might be a good fit for a need that you have in the business, I always say, do not skip getting clear about who it is that you want and what qualifications they have. And while it's important in the strategic side of it, it's super important because what, what happens is, is that with your clarity, when you're interviewing or reviewing applications, you're now doing that through the filter of being so clear with what it is you want. When we don't take the time to get really clear about who it is that we need on our team, then when someone comes into our business, whether through an application or a referral or you find yourself interviewing them, you may be filtering that through, what is your biggest pain point and can they solve that? And yeah, they didn't have that exact experience I need, but maybe with a lot of training and support, they can fit that role. That is a recipe for disaster. It's also a recipe for disaster to hire somebody because you're thinking nothing better will come along. 
it's really a bad idea to hire when you're in iffy about it. There are some red flags. And sometimes I even say yellow flags. They're not quite red flags, but there are some, you know, cautionary flags being thrown. And yet, because you are coming from a place of not having clarity and coupled with standards of a hell yes, meaning this is what you desire for the role and you are not settling for anything less than that being filled, it becomes I'm going to make it work. It it becomes, let me talk this out and talk it out with my spouse and other team members and my coach and let me think about it. And I'm using my time and my energy and my bandwidth to figure out how I can make this square peg fit a round hole. And I can speak so clearly around this specific example because I see it happening so often in the businesses that I support through coaching and through Leverage Lab. And oftentimes the reason is because we're coming from a place of lack and we're coming from a place of not normalizing that if it's not a hell yes, it's a no and you pass. I had this client and I will have him remain nameless, uh, but he was recently hiring and he was hiring for a administrative, a virtual administrative assistant. And it was a virtual role, but they, but his preference was that they were local so that if his offices open back up again, that that person could transition into being face-to-face supporting the business. He was in a place where he really, really wanted to fill that role. And I remember speaking to him and he was saying, you know, I had this interview and I think it's going to be good. And here's here's some things that I think would be good, even though this, this and this may not work out. And maybe I move those responsibilities to another person on the team and they can't quite fill all the hours, but I'll take some of the hours. <laughs> You see where I'm going here? The person wasn't, you know, a blatant, they're not qualified, but it was a person that applied that didn't fully step into the clarity that he had for that role. And I remember saying, I know it's hard with that position not being filled in the business. I know that it feels like you have no idea how you're going to get through this week or next week with such a large gap on your team not being filled. But I guarantee you will be a lot happier when it's a hell yes. And that the onboarding and the training and the ability for them to support you will be a lot faster when you interview the person that's a hell yes. So as his coach, I encouraged him to not settle for anything but a hell yes. And then no jokingly, three days later, he gets an application for the role. He has the interview and it is a hell yes all the way around. She knocked it out of the park on the interview. The resume and the experience was exactly in alignment with what he envisioned. The support, where that person lived, everything was a yes. And you know what I can tell you with that experience was that he almost missed the opportunity to have a hell yes in his business because he may have been willing to settle for a let me make it work. And I want you to use that as an example in your business, whether it's hiring or maybe it's a project that you say yes to, an opportunity, a collaboration, a client even. Could be that you're saying yes to a client and it's a eh, and then you don't have the bandwidth to say yes to the next client that comes that's a hell yes. I'm going to share with you another example. A hell yes today may be a hell no tomorrow. So the examples I had given to you so far in this episode were around, you know, something new comes into your world, an opportunity, an experience, whatever that looks like, you're asking yourself, is this a hell yes? And if it's not, then it's a no. But what happens when you once had a hell yes around something and then it becomes a hell no tomorrow? A hell yes does not always mean that it will wind up as the right quote unquote strategy or opportunity. 
It is right at the time for you and your business with the information you have. And I'll further say not just the information you have, but the season that you find yourself in, in your personal life or in your business, perhaps it was a hell yes. And yet now something has changed and it's no longer a hell yes. Anything that was once a hell yes can turn out to be a hell no. And that is just as powerful to know and decide on for yourself and your business. Sometimes we normalize our schedule or a meeting that we have with a team member. We're like, yep, I can meet with that team member every single Friday for one hour. And that strategy may have worked incredibly well as you were onboarding them. But what happens when you never reevaluate that and now what would serve you better is two 30-minute meetings throughout the week or one 30-minute meeting? What's another example of Maybe you committed to a partnership with someone in the past and you it could be a strategic partnership, a marketing partnership. You could have said hell yes to a contractor or an employee and it was a hell yes, but something changed and now it's a no. It is so vitally important to always be asking yourself, is this still a hell yes? When we're asking ourselves those questions and we're challenging the status quo and the things we've normalized, all we're doing is giving ourselves permission to level up and to raise our standards. But so often we don't ask those questions. We put our blinders on or our head in the sand because we're not willing to do what it takes to make the change. That may require some discomfort. It may require some additional work. It may require having uncomfortable conversations. And I am here to tell you that if your business was full of hell yeses, I think it's worth the short-term uncomfortable or if you would to label that as pain for the long-term gain of ultimately having a business where you're so comfortable having standards that serve you and your business to the highest degree. And if you want to hear some behind the scenes about how I've been raising the standards in my own business over the years and how that had played out in my own business uh, with regards to my clients and my team members and my operations, I invite you to go back and listen to episode 211, Update How My Business Survived in My Absence. In that episode, I share with you how I had made these micro decisions compounded over and over over the years that resulted in me being able to suddenly step away from my business and still have a business that operated and fully supported me. But had I not raised my standards around my clients and my team members and the way my business operated, that situation in my life could have really, really broke my business or turned out to be a lot worse. And so by me inviting you to raise your standards and have more hell yeses, it will help you enjoy your business day to day. It will help reduce your stress. But I would also say it's probably going to be a great investment in your business should you ever need to be able to leverage the choices you previously made in your business. And if you want to hear more about what I'm talking about there, just head on over to episode 211 and I think it will explain itself fully. All right, so here's to more hell yeses in 2022. I've loved having you listen to Productivity Straight Talk, and I sure hope you found today's episode about raising your standards and having more hell yeses to be incredibly valuable for you. And I need to be straight with you. No change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you or your business. So my invitation for you today is to find one area of your business that does not feel like it's a hell yes. And I want you to evaluate it and get clear about what would it look like if it was a hell yes. And then take action. 
take action to turn that thing that feels stressful or mediocre or you've normalized to be okay, but you know that it's not, and take action into turning that into a hell yes. And then once you have that momentum, choose another area of your business that you want to turn into a hell yes. If you want coaching and training and accountability around raising your standards and the support that it takes to move through those decision-making and hard conversations, then I invite you to check out my Leverage Lab program. You can do so, learn more, and join us by heading on over to amberdelagarza.com forward slash Leverage Lab. Again, that's amberdelagarza.com forward slash Leverage Lab. I cannot wait to have the opportunity to work with you and further support you even more so than in this podcast. So that's my straight talk for today. Until next time, have a productive week. 